128. Pilgrimage. Calcedon Report number 103, March 1974. A pilgrim is one who journeys to a destination from a religious motive. Thus, we are all pilgrims, in that our lives are a quest for those goals which are to us most desirable, goals which our faith makes us live for. There was a time when pilgrimages were exclusively religious, as with medieval man, and with the Puritans who became pilgrims by their journey to America to establish a godly church and society. With the Enlightenment, however, pilgrimage took on a new dimension, the grand tour of Europe in quest of experience. To become a gentleman, it was necessary for an English youth to go to Paris and Rome and to enjoy the pleasures thereof. The goal of pilgrimages had become not Christian experience, but humanistic experiences, aesthetic, intellectual or sensual, depending on one's desires. The Romantic movement added a new dimension, the pilgrimage into the bizarre, the perverse and the insane, as Mario Prats documents so well in The Romantic Agony. The lust for experience meant a quest for the abnormal, and for the perverted. In the 20th century, this quest has been greatly developed. Both in vicarious and in actual experience, the lust for the abnormal and perverted and the delight in being shocked has led modern culture into strange byways. Culture has become pathology. In recent years, entertainment has been heavily dominated by the pathological and the film industry increasingly caters to an almost entirely voyeuristic, pseudo-masochistic audience. The vast appeal of a stupid and tasteless film like The Exorcist is simply its appeal to this mentality. Lines of people have waited by the hour to see it, and newspaper reports that some viewers had fainted and vomited only increased its appeal. Thus, a fine symbolic note was struck when a major airline advertised a 1974 travel pilgrimage. Spotlight on Dracula. A guided, totally unique travel experience which involves you in an adventure combining present-day reality with medieval history and ancient folk beliefs. You participate in a recreation of the Dracula legend, completely immersed in the original environments in which it flourished, with reenactments for your exclusive benefits. Of the historical Dracula, the people Nuncio reported in 1475 that he had, by that date, personally authorised the killing of 100,000 people, usually by torture and impalement. Contrary to the travel guide brochure, Dracula was not a medieval, but a Renaissance figure. The Renaissance, which proclaimed the love of man and his rebirth, set a precedent for the 20th century by its lust for torture and murder. It was the era of men like Ludovico Sforza, the Borgia Pope Alexander VI, Sigismondo Malatesta, Cesar Borgia, John Tiptoft and others. It is fitting, therefore, that the 20th century pilgrim pay his money for a pilgrimage to Dracula's palace and realm. He is closer to Dracula than to God. Dracula's world is the world of his heart. The newspaper headline reads, 600 serious crimes reported in city schools for a seven-month period, and it tells of murders, rapes, robberies, assaults, and other crimes committed in, quote, public, end quote, schools, despite the presence of security guards. In spite of this, a prominent man objected heatedly when I suggested Christian schools as the alternative. Dracula is better than God in the eyes of millions. By their pilgrimages you shall know them. Pilgrimages to Dracula's castle, to the exorcist, to schools that educate for ignorance and godlessness, to entertainment geared to shock, violence and horror, to blasphemy and immorality. This is the love of modern man. A new bumper sticker perhaps is needed, which will simply read, Dracula lives again. 
in the age of communism, Nazism, and mass violence in the name of, quote, rights, end quote. Perhaps Dracula is too mild a figure. The 20th century has surpassed him. Ironically, Dracula was killed in 1476 by his own men as a result of his own folly. In this, he is a fitting symbol of our time. Our Lord declared, For all they that take the sword shall perish with the sword. Matthew chapter 26, verse 52. Again, we are told, He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Revelation chapter 13, verse 10. The meaning here is not the use of force in the execution of justice, but the denial of justice in the name of power. All who set aside God's law shall fall under its judgment. Those whose pilgrimage of life is a quest for experience and power outside of God will pay the penalty thereof. The goals of the pilgrimage of modern man, both in his own person and by means of the status orders he creates, are quests for Dracula, for experience in the perverted and demonic, and for an order created through total tyranny. Dracula instituted so rigid a control over his people that he placed a golden cup near the fountain of a public square in his capital, and no man ever stole it. They did not dare. This did not mean that Wallachia was crime-free. The biggest thief and murderer was Dracula's tyrant state, and it tolerated no petty criminal to interfere with its life of crime. Today, lawless as our cities are, the worst crime is committed by the state, the theft of freedom. Moreover, a people who themselves have a perverted pilgrimage conspire to help the state destroy them. But a more important fact remains. The Draculas of history are historical curiosities. They pass, but God remains, and his purpose prevails. The false pilgrims of our day can only build ruins, but we know that our labour is not in vain in the Lord. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 58 The future is ours under God, and it is a time for strengthening the foundations and for preparing to take over and govern. The Lord's order is very clear. Occupy till I come. Luke chapter 19 verse 13 and he does not issue impossible orders 